Hi, it's Andy, and welcome to the Hills Church Podcast. Our hope is that this will help your life and inspire your faith. Thanks again for checking us out. Hey, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, I just want to say what David said. You're so welcome to church. Let's give everybody a wee cheer this morning as a church. Good job. You chose, you chose church and not Portrush. Well done. You're, do, you're already off to a great start. You can go to Portrush this afternoon because it's not going to rain. But uh, hey, my name's Andy. If you don't know me, I'd uh, love to get to know you. Um, I'm wearing double denim today. Give me a wee cheer. Uh-huh. I know I'm pretty cool, aren't I? I'm kidding. I'm going to this, this whole thing where it's 41 now and I'm trying to be relevant and cool. Am I cool, youth? Absolutely not. I get it. But um, hey, I'm looking forward to speaking this morning. We're kicking off a brand new collection of talks next weekend, actually, which I'm going to start. Um, and it's going to be around the word legacy. Who wants to leave a legacy? Hands in the air. I like it. Well, next weekend, the, we are going to start talking about the word legacy. And over the, all the Sundays in June, we're going to learn about what it means to leave a legacy and how you and I can be a part of leaving a lasting legacy. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, been planning it. I spent yesterday afternoon. We were going to go to Port Rush and change plans. Uh, plans changed. The kids started doing something else, and I started working and um, had a good time praying and got some clarity at what I believe God wants to hear and do for the next few weeks. But um, before I get into the talk as well, I just want to give you a wee building update. Who wants a building update? <laughs> building update is this. There's no update. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Um, uh, we have had lots, I've had meetings about meetings this week, anybody ever do a, a week like that? Um, the, the truth is we are pressing on um, and more and more it become, it's becoming kind of apparent that it looks like we're probably going to end up being staying around the theatre. It, it does look like that, but again, I mean, the equipment and all that's happened with that, we had to write a, a big document this week that fried my head a little bit, uh, Victoria did a good job and then I had to read it. That was the only frying part. Um, but it does look like um, we're going to end up being inheriting equipment here and um, probably trying to cut a deal to stay here. It looks like the option that's on our cards right now that seems to be the best. Uh, but isn't it a crazy season to have multiple options, right? Um, so just be praying, hey, because uh, maybe I'll blend it through my message today a little bit when I'm talking, but uh, we don't want to be doing anything that's not from God, right? Yes, church? Um, and we're excited about that, so we're just trying to get the heartbeat of God um, and um, do what He wants us to do, right? And believe it or not, this is what we trust this morning. God knows exactly what we need. Uh, he knows exactly what you need this morning. So as I kick off this conversation this morning, I've titled today's message, Hope of Harvest. Who wants a harvest of hope? Who wants some hope this morning? Anyone on here searching for a little bit of hope today? Well, I'm not my own. We're going to be, uh, we're going to help me today. We're not going to be quiet. We're going to, be, we're going to give me some feedback. Is that all right? Yeah. So who wants some hope in their life right now? Yeah. Very good. Uh, is there anybody in here who would go to say that we're in a time in life where every one of us need a little bit of hope? Agreed? I mean, the whole place is uh, working this morning. You're doing really, really well. If you listen to this podcast, the crowd are going crazy. They're jumping off their seats. They're trying to get down on top of me. It's nearly weird. Um, but here's what Hebrews says in chapter 11, verse 1. Joel's helping me today. Let's give Joel a wee cheer. He's up in the, up in the box there. Let's give Shazzy a cheer too. He's doing all the sound and the lights and all that stuff. Uh, he's got Baby Shark this evening, so if you want to come to Baby Shark, he's really, really excited about that. Now, faith is confidence, the Bible says, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And what we hope for, an assurance about what? We do not see. The fruits of faith and patience produces a harvest of hope. But we need to have faith for what we are believing for. So my number one question this weekend is, as I throw off this one-off message just to, that I feel that God is for us this weekend, is I want to ask you a question this morning. What are you hoping for? What is your dreams? What is your desires? What are you believing God for? What do you believe in, in your life for? Maybe you're here this weekend and you, you know, you, you're in this room and there's all, would you, would, you, would you agree there's all sorts of people in this room this day, today? And isn't that a good thing? Isn't it a great thing that we're all different? Didn't David do a good job hosting the service this morning? But he's different to me, right? He's a Man United fan, so he needs an extra pair. I mean, you don't, you don't hear from a Man United fan until you start winning. I mean, every, every United fan in the world is all happy today, and they're all chatting. 
do you support football? You know, just asking all these random questions. You wouldn't be into football, would you? Uh, uh, whatever. Um, uh, but what do you believe in God for? Maybe you're a Liverpool fan that, and you believe in God that you one day will get over United. I mean, eh, that's maybe a good prayer there. But, uh, but, but what are you hoping for? Like, we're all hoping for something. If it's, I mean, I want to, I'm hoping right now to wake up some morning and my garden just to be there. <laughs> Fenced, electric gates, tar- the whole plant just there. I mean, that's what, that's what I'm hoping for right now. Uh, I'm hoping for different things in my family. I'm hoping for things. Uh, we're married 10 years this year. Woo! Mental, I know. Uh, I'm hoping for things for my children. I'm hoping for things for my family. I'm hoping things for this church. Right now, we're hoping for things for our church. Literally, we're in that middle ground of hoping for something, for God to give us some clarity. But there is this gap, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to talk about the, the truth is to get hope. Well, there's a gap between what we're hoping for and where we're at right now, and that gap that I would describe as faith. Okay? And I think one of the biggest things that happens within faith is that we need patience to wait on the outcome that fundamentally we believe is from God. So we can have all the hope in the world over here, and then we can have all the faith in the world over here, but if we don't have the patience to sit in this gap, well, really and truthfully, how does that work? And the bottom line is this, what I've found is sometimes in the gap of waiting for our breakthroughs, whatever that may be, is can be somewhat distracting. It can get us caught out. It can get us caught up in different things. And I'm trying to find the line that I wanted to say this morning, but this is what I believe. We inherit God's promises through faith and patience. We, 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 we get what God has for us through faith and patience. I want to tell you this morning that if you're in a season of waiting for God to bring breakthrough, here's a little bit of wisdom. And this is not from Scripture. This is just Andy Gamble giving you some wisdom. And if I believe I'm the pastor of this church, well, I've got to believe that I can articulate and give you some wisdom. Are you okay to receive some wisdom this morning? I mean, the crowd went mental for listening to the podcast. They nearly tumbled me again. Settle down, everybody. <laughs> Security, keep them back. At least you're working. Don't try to articulate it. Just chill out. Now, that's great, Andy, you've said just chill out because I'm in a season of waiting, waiting, waiting. Listen, I'm in this season right now of this building project. Does anyone know me personally? Does anyone know by the fact that I really am not really a sitter about her type of person? I want everything bing, 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 bing. I mean, like, let, 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 let. it drives me absolutely insane what's going on right now. It's like, what is happening? What is happening? Like, gee, dear God, like, help me. Like, what can happen? What can happen? And, and truth being told, there is one person on heaven, and he's breathing through earth through his Holy Spirit, and his name is Jesus. He's still alive, and he is with us, and he knows more than I could ever dream of or imagine, Scripture says. So why should I get fretted about what's happening in these coming weeks when God already knows? So it's the most weirdest scenario I've ever been in in my life because I just got a text from about a dozen of my church pastor's friends. It's incredible that we have all our church friends. Isn't it incredible? Uh, it's incredible that there's other churches doing different things, reaching different people all over the world. I absolutely love it. I celebrate you this morning if you're from a different church background, whatever you're from. I love that. I love that people are doing this. And I got questions this morning. What about your building? What about your building? And my answer was, having a clue, having a clue, having a clue, having a clue. And uh, they're going, fill a piece, fill a piece, fill a piece, fill a piece. We are, the theater company shuts its doors on the 16th of June, which is in a few weeks' time. Therefore, technically, we have a gap. And even the guys here, they think they have me under pressure. I told them on the phone this week, sir, you having me under pressure, sir. Take, t- close the doors. We're good. We'll, we'll get a car park. We're, we're sound. Because I said to them, God knows what's happening with our building. So if it offends you, if you believe in God, I don't know your background. Why am I? I, I mean, I don't have a flip phone. I mean, do I have a flip phone? I mean... There we go. Um, if, uh, 
if you have a flip phone, like seriously, you're amazing. You're an absolute legend. You need to start an Instagram account because that's totally cool. Um, but I, <laughs> I just told the guy, I said, listen, it makes no sense to us. Uh, we're in no hurry. We're no panic. He was all, but you only have the second engine. I says, well, great, because God's going to make it so clear to us. It's all going to just fall in place. It's going to happen. Yeah. So we're not going to hang here anymore, but we are going to go into this legacy thing next, next weekend. We are going to believe and we're going to collect an offering the last Sunday of June because we're all going to participate in giving into what God wants to do in the next season of our church. Yes. It's not, this, is not the, this is not by the big smack generosity of one generous person who church. This church has not been built like that. That is not how we rule. We are not a large mainstream uh, government. Fo- we are nothing. Like, we are a product of the sacrifice of a load of different people giving in faithfully. Tithing. We believe it is 100% biblical. If you think we talk about money in this church and that offends you, I'm sorry. We took three Sundays out of five years to talk about money in our church. Isn't that right, church? That's all we've talked about. But we do believe it's biblical. And we do believe that everybody takes a small percentage of their salaries and put it into the house of God, and God builds his church. That's how it works. It's not out of like, oh, you, you, get, you, get, you, you get a fancy room and you get a higher seat. We are not that church. We are not about hierarchy. We are about the kingdom of God and his people coming together in one and sowing and sacrificially together to pull off what I believe is a miracle every single Sunday in the name of Jesus. I think this church is a miracle. I am blown away and I am humbled to be a part of it. I have got myself around some church plants that's going around Europe. We were at a conference a few weeks ago. I got to travel a few weeks ago to America. And I'm, frankly, I'm not really no rush back because, I mean, that place is just crazy. The food is just full of salt and whatever else is going on. But honestly, I had the privilege of seeing some great things happening, speaking at some churches and speaking in front of thousands of people. And I was asked one question when I come back, well, what's your thoughts of being away? I'll tell you what my thoughts of being away is. I am absolutely loving what we're doing here. This is fantastic. I love it. I love being a part of it. I'm so proud that I get to be a part of this. It's like I had my friend here this morning. He, he came up. He goes, I want to get up and see this place. And he, he, he's a hair sal- works a salon down there. And he, he, doesn't be- he doesn't even believe in God. In fact, he believes in nothing, which I told him this morning is he has more faith than I do because that takes a lot of faith to believe in nothing. I'm not contradicting his faith. I'm just saying I do believe he has faith because he says he believes in nothing. Anyway, uh, he just said, like, this is so special, Andy. It's not normal. Like, this is special what's going on here. And I want to be a part of it. And I just want to let you know that I am so proud of this church. Therefore, I'm so proud to be known with you. I'm so proud where you're at in your journey. I'm so proud to see people getting on well in their walk with God. I'm so happy. that There's, there's people in this room, 90% of this room I never knew. And on, on, on maybe more, actually, 95% of this room I didn't know before I started this church. And therefore, that's what God's blessing me with, because the church is not a building. It is God's people. So what are you believing God for this morning? Sorry, I'm getting caught up on a little bit of a tangent. Where are you in your story? Like, what is it you're looking for? What is it you're asking God for? Because the reality is God wants you to desire something. Are you believing for your family and friends? Are you believing for healing in your life? Are you believing for a relationship to rebirth, to kindle, to ignite, for God to heal things, to fix things? Are you looking for God's provision? Are you looking for um, uh, uh, clarity of what to do with your life? What are you looking for? Because I want to tell you this morning, there is no answer that Jesus, there is no thing on earth that Jesus is not the answer to. Jesus is the answer to everything. He has the answer to every single thing. He holds the key to everything. He knows every hair on your head, Scripture says. God has a plan and a purpose for you. But the question is this morning, will you trust him with that? James chapter 5, verse 7 and 8 says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the Lord to yield its vulnerable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and the spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Listen, church, God wants us to be patient. But I, flippin', do not like being patient. And in fact, I hate it. I don't want to wait for nothing. Right? Get her done. 
I'm like, seriously. And God, over these last few years, has really been teaching me this word patient. But I have walked with you, people in this room, through seasons of your life. I've walked through many people this week. This last week, I've met people that are not even from this church background. They're not even of any faith background. They come to meet me for coffee, want some help. And, and I have saw that, and even if I'm being honest as well, Victoria's not here. So one of the things I want to get Victoria for her 10-year anniversary, which is the stupidest thing ever, and I think it was Hope would give me the idea, or Owen, or I don't know who it was, uh, was a photo album. You know, like a wee album. So you go through your photos, and like, literally, the only photos I have start from when Victoria and I got engaged to when we got married. And I have to pick 30 photographs of the last 10 years, and they make it in a wee book. I'm so cheap. Like, I'm, the boys are going to shaft me outside, and I'm getting really ran over the bus here. I mean, um, and it's just the most weirdest thing. So, met, we, Hope and I were, and Owen were working the other day, and we were together, and I was to pick 30 photographs. Dear goodness gracious me, there's so many photographs. <laughs> and I was like, I choose like 100, and I've got it narrowed down now. I've got the 30 pictures, things sent off. But the, the book's not going to come now, like, to after anniversary, so whatever. Uh, it'll be an extra surprise. Yeah. And um, anyway, so, but what, what I realized was, going through them photographs, though, and, and, and what I've come to realize in life, even in every season, like, I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't nailed this. I haven't nailed this with God. In fact, I failed in this area. I haven't, I haven't been a good waiter. I haven't been a good person at being patient. I have, I have missed sometimes what God wanted to do in different seasons of my life for lack of patience. Anyone else? I, I, I have been able to get so infatuated about what wasn't happening and what was out of my control that I missed some t in some seasons what God was doing. And I was looking through the pictures of we got engaged and that awful cheesy photographs and the, 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 the whatever that guy was doing the day we got married. I'm like, sheesh, uh, <laughs> dear Lord. Um, Love me wet. No, don't get me wrong. But, you know, and looking in at our kids and living that wee flat in Eglinton. I look back in the flat in Eglinton and I wonder sometimes that I, I was challenged, like, was, did, I miss, did I miss some things? Did I, you know, I sometimes get so frustrated whenever it was COVID. I was going, like, we're in a flipping one-bed, flat, two-bed flat, God. Like, you know, seriously, like, get us out of here, man. Uh, that's how I talk to God. Um, God, seriously, um, you know, but... But we had some of the best memories in that wee tiny flat. They were amazing. John bought Judah a tractor for a nine-year-old when he was a week old. <laughs> so we screwed two-by-one timbers on the side of the tractor, and that was Judah's prop to hold him to watch Fireman Sam. Uh, the photos were full of just some really, really good memories. Uh, and it was a good hour, hour, and over the last couple of days, just fiddling about whenever... So Victoria kept saying, what are you doing on your phone? No, no, I'm not doing no, anything. No. <laughs> She's totally suspicious, like. And um, uh, God's been so good to me. God has given me everything that I ever dreamed of or imagined. I have seen God move more than I could ever have dreamed. You know, starting this church and looking back to the first thing we bought was a TV and... I never slept at night because I thought we just spent £322 on a TV. Um, you know, uh, we went to a pub and we started to put ourselves out there. And over them photographs, I've just seen God has been so good to me. And he's, the, the flip of that side is then all these different people that I never knew and faces and photos coming up. And, and, and I want to say to you, like, I have walked with you as well. I have walked through some people in life, and you will know this right now, that this face it, but even in the last five years, like, you might not think you've come as far as you want to be, have come. But I can tell you something now. If you stop, pause, and fill yourself with faith and be patient in the Lord, you've come a lot further than you thought or dreamed ever imagined. I've sat with people that were, I'm telling you, I've sat with people, and I don't have to make this up because you know that life was not looking so good. And to look at you now, it's like you can, all, you can barely tell the person because God has done so much in your life. 
But yet, some way in this thing called life, we all get confused and misconcepted to go, the enemy kind of wants to attack us of what's happening in the right now to rob us of what we think should be or whatever it is going on inside our heads. And I just wanted to be vulnerable this morning and tell you that I know what that's like. Because I have been there too. I'm that guy. I'm like, I want, the, I want the next thing, and I want the next thing, and I want the next thing. Shut up, Andy. Seriously. You know, this week we were, I said to Victoria, what do you want for our 10 years anniversary? And she said, all I really want, and this is what I'm wanting Victoria to say. Do you want me to know what I'm wanting her to say? This is what I'm wanting her to say in my head. I'm pre-planned. I mean, I'm ready to go. I'm prayed up for this conversation. What do you want, dear, for your 10-year anniversary? Ha ha. Phew. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. That's just, just the Holy Spirit. I'm kidding. That is completely wrong, what I just said. But I'm wanting her to say, I would love the garden sewn out and a new fence. I would just love us to go on a family holiday. And inside, for about 35 seconds, I was like, wrong answer. I want the fence. Because I, I'm, I'm, like I am, I am a hyper, like I, I love being around people, right? But I'm becoming more and more like in my own space. Yeah? I'm, I'm turning, I, I, I like a wee bit, I like, just leave me alone because I'm like chilling out here kind of thing. And I, and I like the privacy and like the neighbors are coming now and it's just like, you know, our, our, our window's here and I just want to be able to walk in the kitchen in the morning and get a coffee and know that, no, there's just some guy looking in or whatever. Um, I'm the only person who walks around my house early in the morning to get a coffee, so whatever. But she just said a comment. She didn't even know she said it. We don't need anything else. We have everything we need. And this thing's going so fast, we have chances to make moments, and that's the bottom line. And we went online, and we got this amazing deal, and we booked a holiday and whatever, we're going away for a week and praise the Lord. I'm going to be able to take 19,000 photographs of kids going down slides. <laughs> Judas asked, are we getting business class flights in the, in the plane? <laughs> <sighs> How does he even know that? I was all, it's easy to get, son, you should go online and check. <laughs> He'll know about that <laughs> in a lack of days time whenever we're in jammed on an easy jet flight <clears throat> with everybody else in Northern Ireland <laughs> trying to get the cheapest deal before the kids get in holidays. But I say that to say this. God's doing stuff in your life too. Do you realize that? God, you've come a long way. I see people, I'm sitting looking at you, have moved country and I sat with you in dreams and desires and and I've sat with people here that they've struggled with their mental health. I've sat with people here that have, the that have, uh, world might have said something about them. I said, who cares? I mean, whatever. I mean, the Hills Church is called to reach a certain genre of people. Yes. And I know we're not for everybody. But praise the Lord, because there's other churches out there as well, right? But what, what we do want to do is we want to honor what God has called us to and walk in obedience to Him by faith and have patience to trust that He is articulating all things for His good. And that's what I believe he's doing. And I believe this morning, you, ma'am, sir, are, God is doing so much more in your life. If you would just pause, and I talked about this many times before, but to give thanks in all that he has done. Listen, you know you've sat with me, uh, and there's so many people I could talk about, and uh, that you've sat with me, and it's looked like life was near, like, not really a good place. And all of a sudden, now you're in this amazing place and doing so well. But the enemy will try and come in, and he'll say, the fence, the garden. Listen, I, I remember, I looked through them last 10 years in our life, and actually, I was really shocked, like, God has done so much in our life in the last 10 years. I had two wonderful children who have been able to be part of, uh, pioneering and getting this, the whole church off the ground. We've been places all over the world that we never even thought or dreamed we could have been, but by God's grace, and by God's goodness and His provision, we've seen supernatural happen. 
We saw, we've saw people healed. We've saw marriages restored. We've saw mental health well equipped and courage and out the other side. We've saw things happen. And it's been absolutely amazing. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heavens. Seasons are a thing, Hills Church. But seasons, this is the one thing I know about seasons. Seasons come and seasons go. And whether you're in a season right now of summer, winter, or spring, or whatever other season there is, listen, the next season's coming. So would you this morning be filled with faith to have patience, to trust that that season is only a season, and God is going to come through? Let us become weary. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says this, let us not become weary in doing good. For the proper time, we will reap a harvest. But here's the bottom line to reaping a harvest. And I want to go back a little second before I read the last line of Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, it says this. Then he said to his disciples, this is Jesus, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. This is what I've seen, Hills Church. We are the few. Yes, not everybody in our community knows that Jesus Christ is Lord. In fact, 97% of them do not. So we are the few. But this is what I want to encourage us this morning, and when we think about this conversation, is that I would rather be the few with God than, than the many without. And I have seen this, that God has done a lot with a few. The, the, the God fed a lot of people with a few loaves and a few fishes. God did a lot with the widow's offering. God can do a whole lot more with your few. And as we consider being a part of what God's doing here, pouring into what God's here doing, please do not despise your few. Please do not despise your littleness that you may feel. There are people in this room that the, the enemy has got you. He makes you feel insignificant. He makes you feel that you're nothing. You're not a part of it. What would you bring to the table? You being here, there would be no us without you. God has a plan, and he's got a purpose for you. Let us not become weary in doing good, for the proper time will come and reap a harvest. But here's how it comes. If we do not give up. The only thing you cannot do is quit. All you have to do is keep going. It's that simple. So what are you waiting for? Niall, do you want to play the keys and help us a little bit? Thank you so much. What are you waiting for then? What are you believing God for? That's my question. I've ended in this conversation that we're having this morning with the question that we started out with. What are you believing God for? What is it you're trusting God for? What are you believing God for? What is the breakthrough you need? What is the, what is the pressure point? What is it? Well, maybe this morning already you've just been encouraged to be like Andy Gamble and just kind of chill out a little bit and go like, God has done a lot in my life and I know he's done a lot in yours too. Be reminded this morning that you don't need to make it happen. When you're ready, God will make it happen. Yes? I have thought that this thing would have went a certain way. As a leader, I am now in a place more and more and more as I grow in the things of God and into what God has called me to. I am less and less attracted to bringing a lot of big plans and vision for the future. My vision has not changed, Hills Church. My vision is you. Our vision is the people of the Hills Church. We want to give every person and the opportunity in the northwest of Ireland to at least hear the gospel that Jesus Christ is Lord. We want to see people come to faith, and we want to see people that know God grow deeper in their relationship with Him. That is it. But what I've realized is not to bracket that too much because we never know how God is going to articulate the story. But what I understand more and more and more is that God wants us to be ready before he puts too much on us. So if your breakthrough hasn't happened yet, I want to be honest, perhaps God's just preparing you for it. He's waiting in your back in the best sense to carry what God has to give you. 
Because I love what Proverbs 19.21 says. As many are the plans of a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. As I close today's message, I want to say this, that I am the kind of guy that I believe, I just happen to believe that God's in everything. Maybe God has given me the, just a, the ability to put my trust so much on Him. I don't know what it is, but I believe that God is in everything. I think He works in every single situation, in every t- single scenario, in every single difficulty, in every single good thing. I think God works in everything. I just believe He does. I believe God also works Whenever we are in a traffic jam and we have to get changed direction, I believe God's in when I'm frustrated. God is in when I'm when I'm feeling negative. I believe God is when I'm feeling high. I sat there the other day. I scrolled through ten years, and as I looked through the pictures, it got me even thinking more and more of going. Man, I remember that time where I thought it was going to go that way, and and then God, you went this way, and then God, I thought we were here and we were there, and listen, my my my, my accumulation of my life since I followed God, my life really. Really never started till I was 25 years old until I became a Christian, until I gave my life to Jesus. Till I fully surrendered what I desired from my heart to the Creator that knew what He had already designed me for. Because I had this focus plan and dialed in and thought I was going well. Listen, I was going nowhere until I met God. My life really only came to ignition and purpose because God knows exactly what He wants for me. I didn't see that I would go to university and study theology. I did not see that, whole Church. I didn't see that I would go there. I didn't see that I would end up here and there. I didn't see that even starting this church, that it would birth faith. And 95 couples over Europe in the last year that said they want to plant a church. And the main trigger was watching us online in our little Instagram account. 95 churches may be planted out of us saying yes to God. 95 churches times 200 people. How many people? A whole pile of people. I never thought I would be on boards of our Great Britain and pioneering this thing. And we're about to host a day in London. We've got 107 people who want to come along to hear what I have to say about what God has done in the whole church. And yes, but what God has done. We're, we're, we're helping things in Ireland. We're being a part of that. We're on the bo- I'm on these like, things called boards, whatever even boards mean. Fundamentally, getting to articulate and structure what God wants to do in people's lives all over Europe. I never saw that. I'm the kind of guy that goes into the shop for one thing. What is it about going to a shop when you're a man for one thing? And you come out with 76. I want to tell the Lord, I guess. No. Suddenly a bag's 5p and we'll just carry stuff. No, I walked, in, I walked in to get milk. And then I saw that the coconut milk was half price, so I brought two of them. And then there was a real good deal in butter, so I'll bring that just in case. I mean, I don't go near Asda anymore, because like, I'll just buy a mop just for the crack, because it's a special value. I mean, we have nine mops, so I just bought an ore mop. But she's, Victoria's like, why'd you buy an ore mop? It's half price. You know, I'm just... Like... But even when you're driving down the road and you're changing direction, I, I wonder what God protects you from in that moment, whenever there's a traffic jam and you have to wait, and you've been working nine minutes, and there's a four-minute queue, and you're going like, why? Would we dare believe today that God's probably already stopped us? Eh? But we believe that God's not parking us, He's protecting us. Would we believe that He's not rejecting us, He's redirecting us? Would we believe all those things? Would we believe that actually where we're at right now is meant to be exactly where we're meant to be? So, what is the title of today's message? So, uh, Joel, would you put it back on the screen for us that you made this morning? I walked in this morning, I said, Joel, you've got nine slides to make. He said, Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's not exactly what you said, Joel. Harvest of hope. The fruits of faith and patience. Are you feeling that you're filled with hope this morning? Is anyone here feeling they're filled with hope this morning? Have you any hope this morning? This is what I want your hope to be in this morning. That God knows exactly where you are right now. He knows exactly what you need. He knows better than anything than you could ever dream of or imagine. And He has it all under control. He's got it. God's with you. I've been there. I've been wanting to fight the situation. I've wanted to confront it. I've wanted to say this. And I've got annoyed at people too. And and I haven't... Listen, if I get annoyed at people, I know this that you've got to know to me. 
We're called to lead a church. I know that I probably have offended people. I've said things wrong. I made a stupid comment. I dropped the ball. I know. But God knows better than me. He has you covered. He is with you. He is going to come through for you. He is going to provide for you. The question is, he's going to give us exactly the proper building. If we're meant to be here, Hulse Church, for the next 10 years, we're going to be here. Maybe one day we'll get to buy this place. Maybe one day there's a, do you know what's happening right now? There's a building already being prepared for us. The right thing and the right scenario and the right conversation. And I never want to be a leader that takes the glory. I went to that conference all day and there was questions coming glory. And every answer was batted straight back. Honest to God, it was God that did it. We, we genuinely, I'm not trying to plead the whole, I'm humble, whatever. But genuinely, God has done this. This building thing has been a God thing. And we, we thought we were going one way. And right now it looks like we're going another way. Who knows? We might be going another way yet. But let's do this. Let's go in God's timing. Let's go in God's speed. Let's go with God. Because when we go with God, oh my goodness, where are we going to end up? So as I close, God's got you. Yes? Stir up your faith. Keep believing. That thing that you're believing for that seems impossible is going to happen. Anyone struggling with peace right now? Anyone struggling with patience? Maybe the word patience it seems like Gandhi. You don't know what you're talking about, son. I've been waiting for years. Well, listen here. God is going to come through. So, God, I pray for every single person this morning. I pray for this church, God, the Hills Church. I pray for people in this room and anyone listening to this podcast. I pray, God, stir them with hope. Fill them with hope, God. Give them hope, God, beyond their dreams. Give them hope, God, for the future. Give them dreams. Give them desires. Stir up a fresh faith in them, O oh God. And I pray, God, for God, people this morning with patience. Give me patience. Give people patience. God, help us to block out the enemy, whatever he is trying to rob from us in this season of our life. And help us, God, to remember that your goodness, that you're good, that you provide, that you're a healer, you're a restorer, that you are our God. So I pray, God, this morning, just remind us all that you're with us. Remind us, God, that you know exactly what's going on. Remind us, God, that you have a plan and you have a purpose. In Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Hey, one more thing before we end today's service. The prayer is going to be on the screen. Joel, thank you so much. We're going to say this out loud, aren't we, church? Let's go. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In your name, Amen. Hey, every eye closed. The guys in the back, and uh, Niall's got his eyes shut this morning. I don't do this every week. In fact, I just ask people to leave it with you. But hey, is that you this morning? You said that prayer today for the first time. Do you just want to give me a nod, a wave, one person? Is there anyone else this morning? You're saying, hey, I've prayed that prayer for the first time. Thank you so much. You're so brave. Is there anyone else? There's people in here that today that, you know what, I, I don't want to individually challenge you, but this prayer actually is a prayer that I prayed on the 28th of February in 2008, and my life changed forever. So I've seen three people have said they've said that prayer today for the first time, but maybe you're in here as well this day, and you've actually said yes to God when you were a child, and maybe you just need to recommit your life. Is that you today? You need to reconnect yourself to God, get yourself back in to the things of God. Maybe that's you. So God, we thank you, God, for every person that has said yes to you today for the first time, and we thank you, God, for people that have recommitted their life to you today. I pray, God, this week would be easy for them. I pray, God, give them confidence. I pray, fill them with hope. Give them the best week of their life. In Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. Hey, give God a clap this morning. <laughs> Happy days. Hey, the sun is shining. Please go out, grab your kids, Hills kids, come back in, get a cup of tea and coffee. Be no hurry away. But I'm already looking forward to seeing you next Sunday as we kick off our new collection of talks on the Word legacy god bless you thank you for listening and have a great week hey thanks again for checking out the hills church podcast hey if this message has inspired or encouraged you in any way why don't you share it with a friend 
Hi, as well as that, we meet every Sunday at 11am at the Waterside Theatre and we'd love to see you at one of our services. But hey, thanks again for checking out the podcast. Why don't you subscribe to our channel?